Gig Gab, episode 379 for Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsors for this episode include Super Mega Ultra Groovy's Capo app at capoapp.com. We'll talk more about what that is in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How, uh, how are you today, Mr. Kent? Doing okay, Dave. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. You know... I, I noticed something today that has been the case for a couple of months. Uh, do you know what happened in 1623, Paul, 400 years ago? I do not know. Tell me. The Avitas Zildjian Company started its business. The, Sil- the Zildjian Simple Company is 400 years old this year. I, oh. Like, that's crazy. Uh, I wonder, are there any other companies that old in the world? I don't know. Like that's really old, man. I'm get, I really bet there old. are. I bet there are. But uh and there's still like the the, the um there's still like Zildjian's in charge. The the leadership team is they they list four people on the website in the leadership team and three of them are Zildjian's including president uh Craigie Zildjian. She's been the president for a while. And then Debbie Zildjian Katie Zildjian. So three women, Zildjian's and John Stevens is the CEO. Uh, and he joined in 2017. So I, it, it's just crazy to me. They're, they're doing, you know, they've got all kinds of like cool little things and merch and that sort of thing for their 400th, but they're also doing a big, they say a big um, event concert kind of thing in, uh, in the fall. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we'll see what that I is. I bet like there must be, some kind of a company museum that would be pretty awesome to go to there. You know, they are headquartered in Norwell, Massachusetts. So I did not know that either. I didn't know that until today either. Maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to go. <laughs> like you should go. I don't disagree. report back field trip. I, I, uh, I'm going to reach out to them and see if there's a, maybe there's a field trip I can do. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah man. So happy 400th birthday, Zildjian. Amazing. Happy. That's a, that's a, you need a big cake for all those candles. Uh, <laughs> hey, is something tapping your mic? I know you're in a different setup today. Is something like tapping your microphone, like a cable or something? Maybe I'm just getting a Possibly. little. I'm just getting a little bit of something. Micro, right. Microphonics, I would call it. So, being that we're a you know music podcast and we care about sound. Also, if we don't have good sound, the AI bots are just going to do this podcast instead of us, and that's not such a good thing either so how do people know they're not already doing it paul don't let the secret out Mm -hmm. uh i found out about another cool thing we might as well just stay with the cool things for a little bit here uh this company app service called station head trust me on this the worst part about this thing is the name they did great with everything else so we're gonna give them a pass on the name uh it's an app for your iPhone or your Android phone. And it allows you to either be a listener or a streamer. And the idea is you get to be a, uh, a DJ essentially for other people. But the way it works is, you know, being, if you were going to go and stream music on the internet, you'd need to get all kinds of rights and you know, all those things. Cause that's how it works. Musicians got to get the artists got to get paid. Well, The way this app works is you aren't actually streaming anything other than your voice. When you go to play a song, it triggers the listeners, uh, Apple music or Spotify account. You, you decide which one you want to link it with triggers that in the background to play the song that you wanted to play. So it completely, I I don't want to say it bypasses any rights because you're already paying for those. You're as, as, you know, as a subscriber, they, they track what you listen to and they pay the artists accordingly. Not very much, unfortunately, but they do pay the artists. And so uh, the more listeners you have, the more the artist gets paid. And first of all, I thought it was a really clever solution to that little problem. Amazon solved it by using their own music library with that 
Uh, I want to say AWS, but that's not what it was. It's like a something. But anyway, uh, the other thing that, or what's happening with this is artists are using it and saying, hey, we're going to have a listening party for our you know new record. We're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to do it on Monday night at 10 o'clock. Everybody, all our fans can listen in and we'll stream the record and trigger it to stream on your devices at the same time. And, you know, all that good stuff, which is, I don't know. It's I, like, that's cool to me. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's something. I don't know. Something. Yeah. Something. Do you, uh, did you play any gigs lately, my friend? I had a nice weekend off and I've had actually, I'm kind of getting into that place where I'm playing less now. So, you know, I took this day job. And um, it took a while for me to, you know, get through all of my commitments and I'm actually playing less. And I'm in that really weird space of, huh, do I miss it? I kind of miss mm. it, but you know, maybe it's time to, you know, that phase of my life, maybe it's not, it's not that important anymore. And so I look forward to the ones I do. I really am protective of my free time Yep. And it was, I felt, I get, in hindsight, it, it had been such a pedal to the metal effort for so long to get the band up and going, to get the solo stuff up and going. And I really, you know, for what was 20 couple of years, that it was everything, right? Right, right, right. And now I'm, now I'm just kind of like, man, I definitely am going to be picky about gigs. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to play restaurants. I, don't, I only want to play places that are, you know, that I enjoy playing. So I'm not going to take those. Sure. Yeah, I don't know, man. Huh? I I've, I've been through um I I've been through periods of time where, you know, the the gigs are less. Uh and huh? I and I always appreciate those those times. Um some of them have been what I'll call self-inflicted or, or self-induced. And, and some have just been the byproduct of, you know, as part of a band that, that, you know, that the singer and whose wife booked all the gigs, they got divorced. And so that sort of put things on hold for eight months until they got remarried and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. That literally happened with the Murray band in Texas. Um, cool. it, but you know, like I've always, I've always appreciated those, those little breaks. Um, but I've also, it's never worried me. I've, I've, I've found this thing. This is going to sound bizarre. I don't know that I've ever shared this anywhere before, but um, anytime like I find myself not gigging as much as I want to gig, you know, or not, not playing as much as I want to play, uh, be it one of those scenarios or like, you know, when we moved from Texas to Connecticut uh, years and years and years ago, before we ever moved up here, I thought that I had like, uh, you know, people to play with lined up and, and all that good stuff. And I didn't like it, it, it was not what I thought it was going to be. And I was like super freaked out about it. I'm like, Oh man, like, how am I going to find a gig? Like this sucks. And did we make a mistake? And you know, all that stuff, mm -hmm. all, all those, you know, all those self doubt. Right. And I just decided, well, I can put ads out there. I can put feelers out. Uh, with the people I know and also in places like, you know, in the time, I think it was like Craigslist that we used or something, maybe the local like musicians rag or something, you know, whatever, wherever you put ads back then is where I put ads. And uh, it was like, you know, I'll do what I can. I'll answer the phone when it rings. But the one thing that I can do is play every day and like really just focus on playing and making sure that I'm not forgetting about music and that it, I'm, you know, my, my time spent with drumsticks in my hand is not defined by whether or not the phone rings. And every time that I've done that, because sometimes phone rings. Yeah, the phone rings, exactly. <laughs> it, yeah. Every time that I've like, there, there have been times during those, those breaks where I don't pick up drumsticks for a couple of weeks, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's okay too, for me, uh, I, you know, cause I can't decide if it's okay for anybody else, but it, like, I find that good. It, it gives me a, a fresh approach when I come back to the instrument. It doesn't feel like, Oh, this is something I did yesterday. It's like, Oh, this is a thing that I've missed. And now I'm excited to do it. And I, I see it a different way. But, um, once, once that part's over and I really like am finding the, the need to play, I just play. And like you said, the phone rings and, and things tend to work out. So, well, like I said, I've never been through this 
series of sensations before. I know the house rockers are, it, it's a very busy summer. I pretty much, it's just about all booked. I mean, okay. literally just, yeah. so it's coming and maybe I just know that. So I'm just enjoying the time here, but I've never been one of those guys who's, who's like, Oh, I'm just going to tinker around in my studio. I'm going to, you know, try out a bunch of new pedals. I'm going to, and that's actually for some reason, really appealing to me. Well, you never and, chose to be that guy. There was, there was a period of, of, you know, about a year where we all got to do that, but you know, right. But and <laughs> what all I did then was play a lot, right. you know, and then did, you know, got ready for streams and that type of thing. So it was all kind of pointed to performance. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't literally mechanical, you know, like I see what you're I'm saying. Gonna, I'm yeah, going to work on gear and I'm going to work on new sounds and all that type of thing. So, it's a little bit different. So that is different. No, uh, I, that, I'll grant you that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, that's actually very appealing to me now. Like, like if I have a full Saturday, which I never have if I have a full Saturday, you know, I've got like this half built pedal board and a bunch of effects and a bunch of, you know, different things I've been meaning to get deeper into and actually, you know, doing that sounds fun. Whereas before, there's always a gig, always getting ready to pack, always getting ready to go to the gig, come home from the gig, whatever it is. Yeah. But being being a non-gigging musician makes more sense to me all of a sudden. There's clarity to that now. Again, I could be totally full of crap because I know <laughs> I've got a pretty good summer. Yeah, no, I up, get but, it. But I really have enjoyed a couple of absolutely free weekends and and uh, and I, I you know I find myself kind of you know uh, usually when I have free weekends. I usually kind of like beat the bushes and try and, you know, get more gigs. And I'm like, no, nope, summer's pretty booked. And, um, you know, and then you start going down your list of places. Like, where do I want to, where do I want to apply my energy to try and get a gig? And yeah. all of a sudden that list looks really small right now. The places that I really like to play, I don't really have a lot of desire to play in the game. You know, hi, I'm a new musician in the area. And, you know, I, uh, here's, here's what I've done. Here's my demo. Here's my, here's my video. And, you yep. know, please hire me. I really have little desire for that conversation right now. Yeah, no, that I, I get that. That makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I, 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 I feel you. I, yeah, it, I, yeah, I, yeah, I go through, I go through that occasionally where it's like, yeah, I just want to like tinker, but, by and large, those periods are for me relatively short lived. I am my the thing that drives me is playing music with other people, um, yeah. and so like performing is is sort of the the simplest way to do that. But rehearsing and and getting together and and doing that as long as it's with people who are serious or or shared expectations of the, yeah. the, 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 the gathering, whatever that, whatever that might be. But it, as long as it's in sync, then yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Yeah. Well, we've talked about this before. I have not had many situations in my life where I've just been the guitar player mm. and that actually doesn't sound bad to me right now. Like literally, you know, learn my parts, show up and someone will, will, and because in, in my mind, I know how much stuff all the other stuff is and I have a great appreciation for it. And if someone offered me, you know, that was a good situation, good people, good music, you know, good gigs. That would be really interesting to me. I don't, I don't really want to start going down the list of Craigslist, you know, audition sure. fans. Sure. Not yet. But yeah. Well, and you don't need to, cause you've got, I've got stuff. the guarantee of the summer, you know, it out there, like the, the comfort of the summer out there. And I, yeah. I know you created that, that safety net for yourself, but be that as it may, you have this, this couple of month period where you know, you can sort of enjoy the, the calm before the, the storm. If yes. Right Agreed. Ooh, that means I get to tell you about our sponsor, Super Mega Ultra Groovy. They're the folks behind Capo, but I just like saying Super Mega Ultra Groovy. I also like using Capo. It's my go-to app for learning music by ear. Listen, using music and video players like Apple's Music App or Spotify or YouTube makes it really hard to move around a song and find the right spot that I want to hear again and again. And even in the ones that let you change playback speed, like YouTube, it kind of sounds terrible on music. Well, Capo solves these problems because, first of all, Capo was built using this high-end studio quality audio stretching technology. So when you slow down your playback, even at like a quarter speed, it still sounds great. In addition... Capo also has their transcription playhead, which gives you precise control over your playback start point so that you can pick a chunk of a tune 
and loop it and really dig in again at whatever speed you like. That is what makes it a favorite app, but it does more. Capo lifts, detects, and estimates chords. It detects beat locations and so much more. And Capo is completely free. There are no account signups, no ads, no sneaky free trial subscription to forget about. You have nothing to lose. Visit capoapp.com or search for Capo in the App Store. It works on Mac, iPhone, or iPad. Again, that's Capo by Super Mega Ultra Groovy. C-A-P-O-A-P-P dot com. And our thanks to Capo for sponsoring this episode. All right. So last episode, Paul, I shared an interesting little anecdote about me that happened to me about me with the uh, the guy who booked some gigs for Monkey Fist. And yeah. we, we like talk about response. There have been like lots of response that that we can include and probably will include in the show and perhaps even more response that we can't. In fact, I heard from one drummer out there, believe it or not, not not local to me, but but out there in the listening audience who said, oh, funny, that's exactly how I got the gig with the band that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it has worked out well for him in that band. Like he is, you know, like really doing a lot to push the band forward. And it's been a good thing, but he's like, yeah, that's how I did it. I just started booking gigs. And uh, he's like, of course they had the opportunity to tell me not to do that. Uh, both them and the, you know, their, their former drummer, but that's not what happened. So um, I thought that was interesting. We did get a note from Mark that I think is, uh, is worth dissecting perhaps a little bit. He says, uh, most bands are started and held together with a sort of gentleman's agreement, handshake philosophy, the we're all in this together and let's take over the world mentality, but it never fails that some situation will arise where one member pulls their own personal wants before the band puts their own personal wants before the band. Typical situations being members in multiple bands booking what they personally want versus for uh, before first considering the other bands or someone wanting lots of time off when the rest of the band wants to play lots or vice versa or someone booking a gig for exposure dollars when the band agreed that they needed to set a certain minimum price standard. Whatever the cause, it leads to the inevitable. Why the heck did they do that? And typical sore feelings and resentment, which if left to fester, create major problems for a band. Some people are good communicators and some really stink at it. So as a band leader or band member, what do you do to ensure that you're getting what you want while not alienating the other's wants or needs? Or to put it another way, what is your process to avoid having to do the ethical gymnastics routine to explain <laughs> your side of things to the other so that everyone feels good with the outcome? Big points for ethical gymnastics routine. I, yeah. I I wonder if that's what Mark heard uh, in his head as we were talking about it and figured I need to write an email with that as the punchline because that's ethical gymnastics routine. If we'd thought of that, we would have put that in the uh, in the in the title. That's brilliant, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so, a fair question. It's a great question, yeah. and it's 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 the universal question because we talk about oh, communication is the basic thing, and you know. But it's not that easy, is it? I mean, you know, not everybody is a good communicator. Not everybody knows what they want. Things change. Does your band have a group dynamic where you keep the herd, you know, close? Or is there a leader whose job it is to keep the herd? You know, every situation is slightly different. Yeah. I think that I don't, I don't know about Mark or Mark's band, but the thing that I will react to the most is uh, I started the House Rockers 25 years ago. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't think about, I didn't think about we're going to conquer the world, although I get exactly what he says, but that, that resonates with a slightly younger demo for me when, if you, if, if you're going to do that, oh, you know, we're going to take over our local scene, maybe, I think as you get more seasoned and you, in, and again, I don't know Mark and I don't know his band, sure, but sure. I am reacting that, that probably the good thing to pivot on on Mark's email is that your criteria to bringing people in the band are people who have, who express a similar sense of wanting to accomplish something that you do 
cool. You're in the band. We're, you know, we're, we're brothers. We're on the, we're on the same page, right? Same page, whatever that page might be. It might be to conquer the world or it might be to get together on Tuesday nights and have a jam session like, or somewhere in between. But yeah. However, however, what I would say is that's the thing that gets to go held up to the light. And if, and knowing what I know now, when I'm interviewing, you know, a prospective band member, I ask a lot more about, you know, what else do you do? What yeah. priority would this have in your life? Right. Yep. Um, you know, how do you handle things when multiple bookings come, even if, even if the latter booking is a higher price than this one? Um, you know, so I, I, I think what I've done is I've dr- learned to drill down a little bit farther and ask better questions and not just take the enthusiasm to play in a band as the main thing that convinces me someone's someone who I want to play with. I mean, it's much more, about the hassle of having to replace someone, you know, and again, you know, what happens oh, is, is totally bands, right. yeah. bands fall apart over these things. Right. Because, you know, ugh, all, all right, the time. I don't, I don't really wait. I don't really want to wait for another bass player. Right. I, I, you know, I've this project, you know, if a project's going to work, it's going to go, you know, Otherwise, it, screw now, it. We're, now yep. we're one of those projects that, you know, that is bumping along. I've been here before. Projects that, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object that's bumping <laughs> along tends to stay, tends to continue to bump along. So I think, <laughs> I think you learn to ask better questions and, and you, that's the page that everybody gets on. I mean, not, I mean, I've heard of bands asking people to sign something. Oh. Um, uh, there, there's a, there's a good band uh, out of San Francisco that one of their founding members, when that band started to play a lot less, he played with us. He was a horn player. And he would say, like, you know, we actually had people sign that you cannot take a gig with anyone else until 30 days within a window within 30 days. Sure. You know, fail. You, you don't get you don't get one strike. You get zero strikes in this. Like you, one time you're not available and we get a gig and you're not there and it's 31 days out. You're not in the band anymore. So, huh. you know, there's there's hardcore yeah. approaches to that. Sure. Uh, but again, and then that's that discussion about you have to have the leverage text. You know, like if you're going to make people hold their calendars for you, you better fill it. Or when you do fill it, it better be worth their time and money. Right. Yeah. Or so, Well, if you, if you don't, if that's the, if that's the expectation in both directions, then if, if, if one person doesn't hold up to their end, then the other person's just going to leave the arrangement. Right. Like that's right. just how, that's just how those things work. Yeah. 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 That's fair. So it, it's beyond communication. It's like <clears throat> the ability for the group or the leader <laughs> to discern the likely reality of a certain person's situation. Yeah, that that's fair. I, y- y- yes. And in, in that kind of scenario, I, I agree, but I, I do think there is value in communicating effectively. I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to dismiss that uh, at the same time. I don't want to dismiss what you're talking about here. That's, that's sort of a bigger picture, but, but for these, you know, as each of these scenarios presents itself, I, I think Mark is right that when people communicate well, it can it can work itself out. And when people don't communicate well, it can't. And I, I chose those words carefully because I don't think this um, skill with communication is necessarily a binary thing. I think sometimes well, I'll speak for myself. Sometimes I am a spectacular communicator. And other times I completely suck at it. Right. And, and however, you aware which is which, um, well, certainly after the fact I'm aware, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, but building a culture of communication or perhaps even a culture of maturity in the band helps, especially when it's one of those scenarios where I suck at it and I don't want to communicate about this. I just want to be like a two-year-old and be pissed. Right. Like, cause that sometimes happens where it's like, that guy screwed up. I'm upset about it. I don't want to have to go talk to him. I just like, screw you. I, I, you know, you screwed this up. It's I'm not happy. Well, you screwed this up in my opinion, right? Let me me state it that way. You like you come around or nothing. Right. And the nice part about that is, you know, like if fling is a great example of this because this happens constant, not constantly, but this has happened occasionally in fling by and large. In fact, we all are capable of being good communicators. It doesn't mean that we all always are. And what's nice is 
if say it's a scenario where I am, you know, more pissed than wanting to communicate, uh, at least communicate productively, somebody else in the band will nudge me along and say, Hey, stop being a two-year-old about this. Go talk to so-and-so, you know, and talk it out. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. And, and conversely, you know, there have been times in fling where literally that same person that nudged me along down the path of communication is someone that I needed to nudge along the path of communication. It's like, Hey, remember how good it is to communicate. I'm over here. Yes. I have a vested interest in all of this sorting itself out, but I'm not in that one little dynamic thing. That's messing you up. So mm, I think you need to talk to that person, right? You know, a you good know. band will pick each other up in that way. That's that's what I mean. Yeah. It, that's a great way to say it. Yeah. And a good band is made up of people who have the, I don't want to say this, maybe a common agreement on values, right? Fair. Like, yeah, that's a nice way to one, say it. One of the emails we got where someone said, you know, but what is, what is the line? Right. And we said this, I think in, in the last episode, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Right. We had, we had a guitar player in the house rockers for a very short period of time. He was a well-known local guy, super player, uh, hadn't been in a band for a while. And we happened to need someone. And, um, we got together and jammed a couple of times, spent a lot of time getting, I didn't know him very well. Sure. Spent a lot of time getting to know him. And then when it, you know, clearly he could play and he could sing. When I, I spent a lot of time saying, thinking I was being a good communicator. Uh, you realize this is a side band gig, right? We already have lead singers and, you know, the song list and, you know, we'll, we'll get you a couple songs a night, but, you know, do you understand this is what the role is? And, you know, how we do song selection, all this stuff, right? Yep. W within a month, he was disaffected. Within a month, you know, and... Huh. and It was as and though he didn't understand what you were telling him. Me, the great communicator, right? Right, right, so, right, right. you know, communication is a two-way street is the other thing. Yep. And the ability to discern above and beyond, let's take over the world together, you know, that's easy. Everybody's excited about the prospect <laughs> of, of having a great project, right? Sure. It's yeah. what you do when things are bad. That yeah, when the defined, cash stops you know, flowing in the, uh, yeah. in the startup world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, like, what are the things that are the, the non-negotiables? In my band, my 10-piece band, I always say, listen, I'm... Part of you being in the band is a tacit agreement you're going to be available for you know what I booked. That's the way it was for years, and now like I've shared a few times, now that I've moved away, I'm like part of the being in this band is uh, you're going to hold these weekends that I ask you to hold, and I'm going to go out and book them. I have a track record of booking things. You kind of know what's expected about that, and if you can't agree to that, that's okay. But this is what I need in order to you know keep making it worth my time to go out and you know book gigs and you know keep you in the band. When someone Time and focus are probably two of the things that, that get in the way of bands. Certainly like bad social behavior, like if you, you drink too much or, you know, yeah. if yeah. you're sloppy with your you know approach uh, or if you get the band in trouble, you know, everybody in a group represents a band. If you're the guy in the band who, you know, gets in bar fights and stuff like that and you get fired as a result of that, you know, and you've caught, you've caused the other people in the band not to be able to do what they love to do as well. These are some of the things that you might want to consider looking under the hood when you're thinking about getting into a band with somebody, right? Yep. yep. Is the, does the, you know, and you can ask as many questions and I ask a lot of questions. And, I, and again, I've, I've failed a couple of times at this. Well, you can't um, ever really, you can ask no. the questions and look for red flags or green flags, right? Like, like do you like remember when, um, when, when uh, I hired little feet to play that party and you and I were backstage very much so. Yeah. It was kind of an interesting gig to me. They didn't seem to me like they were necessary. They, they didn't seem like they were, I mean, again, they've been together forever. Yeah. And they didn't seem to me like it was a, a that close a, a brotherhood. It could have been the time. It just more seemed like this is Little Feet and we're all in it and we're all a part of it. And, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like the, and again, I might be reading way too much into this. Like it was a, no, I, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Cause it, it, we, so when, I, when we had, when we had cheap trick, those guys seem like, like, you know, brothers, they had this shared history brothers, you know, they grew up together basically. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you can no, kind of feel interesting that. So backstage there's not one with little feet. Yeah, they, this was no, just so people understand. Cause you and I were there 
this was um, they were pl- hired by you to play a private party at a, a conference at Macworld Expo. And you did. You brought me backstage uh, and we chit chatted with people. I wound up talking to Paul Barrer for a while and he was great. Like everybody was great. But everybody there was great. There was no camaraderie between the band members backstage. It was like. They weren't sitting together. And no, again, they've been together for a long yeah. time. It it very well could be. And again, I don't want to say anything disparaging about little no, feet. They it, were great. They were so nice and sweet to all of us, but it didn't, there wasn't, I didn't detect any chemistry that, you know, they were, they no. hadn't seen each other in a while. And which is true because we hired them during an off period. Yeah. They weren't in and, the middle of a tour. That's true. Yeah. 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 And it did. It took them like, it was the third song of their set when, it was like I could see them Little relax feet. on stage during Little Feet set when they relaxed on no, stage. I'm saying it was their third song of the set when they were Little Feet. Yes, when they were Little Feet, because and they weren't like they were uncomfortable on stage. I, they played fine. They were fine for the first two songs, but it was in the middle of Spanish Moon that you know it was like ah okay they found their groove. <laughs> they like okay thank goodness. Here we are, <laughs> you know, it was, and the it was, point of that, me bringing this up is that some bands can be that. Yes. Like literally. And, and, and it you works know, fine. What, yeah. And it works fine. The, you know, the, and again, they, the, they're little feet, right? So, you know, you know, these guys know what they have and what they're a part of. And, you know, there's all the dynamics of that. Not that, not that existing groups, someone doesn't already decide like, well, I, you know, yeah, I was yeah. a part of that, but now I want to be part of it. It, it, there's no perfect science to it. I think everyone decides what are the, what are the lines? What are the negotiables or non-negotiables you can or can't yeah. put up with? And, you know, I, I, I try that in my life with saying, okay, here's how I'm going to run the band, right? You know, everybody does the same amount of work. Everybody comes to rehearsal. Everybody holds these weekends. If you cannot sign up for this, let's just part as friends. It's totally fine. I get it. But it's not reasonable for you not to sign up for this and expect everybody else to sign up for this. And it's not worth it for me, you know, if nobody signs up for this. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to hop on stage with a band that hasn't seen each other for four months who doesn't want to rehearse and just, you know, make sure everything is okay. You know, that that to me is, you know, madness. That's not, that's not my p- reputation that I would want to put on a stage somewhere, you know, with, with a group that, you know, isn't committed to putting something good on stage. So anyway, the no, point he, is there's a different formula for every, yes, every combination of personalities. And that, that's really what this is. You, you know, sometimes you have five people who are totally in sync. They're the same person. Sometimes you have an alpha and four betas. Sometimes you have four alphas and one beta. Right. I mean, every right. band is different. And, w- and if you can make it, it work, you can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. T- yeah. It, it, uh, Everyone has to have their eyes open is, I think is the thing. I mean, nothing well, hurts, certainly the nothing e- hurts worse than, than getting taken by surprise. By something yes. That, that's that fair. affects you. So I have a question for you. It, it's a question I've actually had in the back of my mind for years and it's just never really come up. You half mentioned it in passing probably about seven minutes ago. Have yeah. you ever been in a band with someone who routinely overindulges at a gig? I, I, I don't mean the scenario where somebody, you know, on a one-off winds up having too much, I, you know, I, I would, I, I think that happens to all of us or has happened to all of us. It certainly happened to me. I think you were there. One of the few nights that that happened to me, uh, I'm not proud of it. It's certainly not something I like to do on a regular basis, but sometimes it happens. You're in bars, you know, you're around all this stuff. It happens. But have you ever been in a band with someone where it, is the norm or the, it becomes the habit after a while. No, no. Okay. I've had one guy who, who had happened too many times. Yeah. And um, in fact, one of the times when the guy was called on it, he quit. He said, you know, you can't tell me what to do. Wow. And I was like, oh, you know, and I, and I liked the guy. And, yeah. you know, so we, I said, well, you know, okay, it's gotta be something because I, I can't, I can't look over at you and, you know, see that you're kind of glazed over and not, you know, if I call a song, you can't, you can't focus on what I'm doing and, you know, you're having a hard time performing. So, okay. And interestingly, that come to Jesus moment passed and it was never a problem after that. Hmm. So, you know, usually someone who's like that, it's like a, you know, dependency issue and you can't get past it. Right. Right. 
Uh, but for, for some reason, the you know, good fortune sh- shined down on us and, and we were able to get by. It was good. I've had other guys who've had one-offs, like one guy, you know, had a bad breakup with a girlfriend and, and had one gig where yeah. he was gone, yeah. but one off. Yeah, I know. I think, I think everybody, whether everybody, everybody has, one. everybody has one, whether everybody gets one, I suppose is sort of up to the scenario on the band. Right. But, <laughs> but everybody has one. Yeah. I, I've my, my policy with that is generally as long as it doesn't, I don't care. I, I care about my friends, right? I, but in terms of whether you're going to choose to, you know, take any drugs, be it alcohol or caffeine or, you know, cannabis or anything else before a gig, as long as it doesn't impact your ability to play and your ability to perform negatively. I'm fine. Like I, I have no judgment on this. It's not my place. Um, but as soon as it starts impacting your ability to play or perform, then I, like we have a that problem. line gets crossed. That's you know? the line for me. And I have, I mean, it, ha- it, it, it's, isn't it rare that if it's habitual, have you ever known someone who can maintain a level in inebriation and be just fine consistently. I've never played with Keith Richards. No, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I don't there mean to laugh about that, but, but no, I, I, I haven't. Um, I, I mean, I certainly, I, I've played in bands with people. It's almost the norm where they have, you know, between one and four beers over the course of a night and it's fine. Right. But, uh, I have been in a band with, I'm trying to think two different people who, wound up sort of increasing that number from one to four to like, you know, six to 10. And it started to become obvious and had to have that conversation. And in one of them, the guy quit and same as your scenario. And then in the other, the guy was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's like, you know, I just, it, it, it has become habit I need to change the habit at the gigs. Thankfully, it's not a habit anywhere else. So it wasn't a dependency issue. It literally just was a, you know, I get to the gig, have a beer, start setting up, have a beer, finish setting up, have a beer. You know, it was, it, it just became this thing and he hadn't really thought about it, but but by the time he'd take the stage, he'd have like five beers and it was like, okay, like, and, and then three more throughout the night. I was like, yeah, man, that's not, that's not good for the gig. And he's like, no, you're right. Thank you. Sorry. I appreciate you bringing this to me. And then that was it. Like he, you know, the problem was, was gone. The issue was gone. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm curious about all of this stuff, folks. Like, have you experienced any of this? What, uh, the, 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 the band members that aren't in sync or the band members who are perhaps having too much, how do you, or have you been in that scenario? Tell us feedback at gigabpodcast.com. You got anything else for tonight, man? No, I appreciate the messages that came in. It was a good conversation, you know, yeah. spurred even more good conversation. It did. It did. I, uh, I appreciated all of it. I appreciated all the perspectives. It was yeah, good stuff. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com, folks. Make sure to check out capoapp.com. Super mega ultra groovy. It's too fun to say. Say it for yourself as you visit capoapp.com. Thanks for hanging out with us. What is it we say, Paul? Oh, let's be performing. That's right. If you can't perform, you're out. See you next week. <laughs>